Man, this is one of the craziest stories that we have talked about in a long time. This guy, and I'm not even talking about Hunter Biden. We'll talk about Hunter Biden later in the show. He's a loser. There, there are some things I have to say about Hunter Biden. I'm talking about Colin Kaepernick. I don't know if you guys have seen this story. It kind of got buried in the avalanche of, well, the Hunter Biden stuff and the Titanic submersible getting lost at sea story. This story about Colin Kaepernick, just when you thought, oh great, I never have to hear this name associated with politics or football ever again, Colin Kaepernick resurfaces. He resurfaces because now he's an editor, I guess. He didn't write the book himself. He just put a book together with two other editors. Two other editors who, even if you don't recognize their names, wait till you hear who they are. I want to read their names to you. Robin D.G. Kelly. Probably doesn't mean anything to you, right? Yep. Kianga Yamada Taylor. Again, probably doesn't mean anything to you because you're not communists. Yes, these two individuals are self-avowed Marxists. Not only is Colin Kaepernick palling around, collaborating with Marxists, he praises these Marxists and admits that he is a Marxist. So get this, when I read this story, I had to to like dig into this story because when Colin Kaepernick was on the football field, this was like the original boycott that conservatives staged, right? When he was on the football field kneeling for the national anthem, when he was kneeling in front of our flag, when he was disrespecting the United States of America and pretending that it was patriotic, pretending that it was in the name of free speech, that you can both love your country while also calling for it to be a better place. We as conservatives were shamed. We were told if you don't raise your fist with Colin Kaepernick's fist, then you don't support black people in our country. Even as we conservatives were like, well, wait a second, isn't that like the black liberation army fist? Isn't that like a communist Marxist symbol? And we were told, no, 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 no. If you don't, if you don't join in Colin Kaepernick's protests, you just don't want to better America for black people. We were told you're racist. We were told you have white privilege and you don't understand because you are part of perpetuating white supremacy. We were, that, that's what we were told about the Black Lives Matter movement, right? As Colin Kaepernick, called to abolish prisons. He called to abolish police. He wore socks with cops on them. These cops are depicted as pigs. We were told, I mean, what did Nike do, right? You can, you can look at this, this Nike ad. Nike paid him how many millions of dollars to do this ad? He's portrayed himself ever since. This, this ad says, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Let me tell you, this, this, little phrase, this marketing mantra from Nike is going to take on a whole new meaning after today. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Well, what exactly are you wanting to sacrifice, Colin? We know you're wanting to sacrifice. He threw his own family under the bus. He was adopted and and his parents are white. Shouldn't make any difference. Parents are parents. Child is a child. They loved him. They raised him. They gave him wonderful opportunities, schooling. He succeeded in our country, became an NFL football player. Most young men's dream that most people aren't able to obtain. He now, by the way, is worth $40 million. Living the American dream. He puts together this book with these two Marxists. This is what he says about them. Are you ready for this? I've long admired Kianga and Robin's work, as well as their uncompromising political analysis. Remember, they're open Marxists. They say we are Marxists. And understanding that black liberation simply isn't possible under capitalism. So Colin Kaepernick is a Marxist. Colin Kaepernick is a communist. He says, I think the anthology makes this, and that's his book, makes this argument quite well. And I hope it challenges readers to see that racism is not only white supremacy's is not white supremacy's only ingredient. White supremacy persists in part because of its relationship with capitalism and heteropatriarchy and ableism and so on. Colin Kaepernick is a Marxist. So as we were shamed for not respecting his right to freedom of speech, what was he doing? He was trying to undermine the United States of America because we are an anti-Marxist, anti-communist country. The antithesis of who we are is against the communist ideology and the Marxist ideology. Can you, this is what he says, can you believe this? 
He goes on to say, the, ev the evolution of my political thinking comes from a combination of elevating my own political education by reading the works of black radical thinkers and being in conversation with black radical organizers. That, my friends, is the language of Marxism. And then he uses a term that I think you'll be very, very familiar with. The Marxist, Colin Kaepernick, goes on to say, black history, and more generally, a critical engagement with US history threatens the white supremacist status quo. So you know what word in that sentence just was like a flashing red warning light to me? When he said a critical engagement, what is he talking about when he says a critical engagement? When, you, when we see the word critical used by radical leftists who are palling around and with Marxists and espousing Marxism, we know immediately that this comes from critical theory. This is a, this is a, a looking at the United States through the lens of critical theory. And what is critical theory but a Marxist theory? Colin Kaepernick is espousing Marxist ideology after we were shamed for not supporting him. If we did not also disrespect the flag of the United States of America, then we did not like black people. All along, Colin Kaepernick was this closet Marxist. And by the way, guess who's featured in his book? Angela Davis, a self-avowed open communist featured in his book. And by the way, as Colin Kaepernick is trying to dismantle our capitalist system, he said, because black liberation is not possible in a capitalist system, and a capitalist system is, is, is nothing but a white supremacist status quo, guess how much money Colin Kaepernick has? $40 million. And this, for anyone interested, is the $5 million mansion that Colin Kaepernick lives in. Take a look at that. Look at that. Whoa. It's quite, it's quite a nice piece of property. It's a lovely house. He must have so much space in that house that he bought with money that he earned in our free market economy, playing a sport, throwing a ball around, becoming massively wealthy in a way that you couldn't do in any other country because of our capitalist system. He seems really oppressed, I gotta tell you. He seems like he is really suffering. He seems like he's facing a lot of discrimination based on the color of his skin. Oh, wait a second. No, 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 he doesn't. What he seems like is he seems like a Marxist. Can you believe this guy? I can't believe that this story is not a bigger deal than it was. Think about before the Bud Light boycott, you rewind just a couple of years and Colin Kaepernick was the big outrage, and rightly so, by the way, I was also outraged, on, on, on the right. People who watched NFL football were like, well, wait a second, this is supposed to be patriotic. I don't want to tune in and, and see before the game um, I don't want to see somebody that won't stand and honor our flag. I don't want to see someone who's raising a fist like the Black Liberation Army used to. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.